we've got Reverend Ebenezer Ablo live in the studios here. And about time now is um, End Time Radio and TV Ministry. Yes, what have you got for us today? What, 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 do we, what should we expect today? Yes, today we're going to look at a, a message to stir up the faith of people that whatever you have, if you had a miracle from God and is dead, don't give up. That miracle can come alive. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, we are ready for you. So, Beloved, I greet you today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I am so thrilled you have tuned in to End Time Radio Ministry. Today we are going to begin a new series on Don't Bury Your Dead Miracle. If there is someone around you, tell the person not to bury any dead miracle or situation in their life. That wonderful thing God did for you, is it still alive and kicking or dead and buried? Glory be to God. If your miracle is not dead, please keep hope alive. That's why I am here with you tonight. By the power of the Holy Spirit, something will stir up in you. There are many who had miracles. I mean notable miracles, yet they have watched those miracles painfully slip out of their hands into the graves without any resistance. Anytime someone refused to bury their dead miracles, something miraculous happened. Before we get into the message, I want to read a foundation passage from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 32 to 40, and then we can get on underway. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson and Japheth, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, was valiant in fight, turned to flee the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were touched, not accepting the deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bones and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert and in mountains and in dens and case of the earth and this all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise god having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect hallelujah the passage we have just read says in verse 35a through faith women receive their dead raised to life again glory be to god it is through faith that such things are possible miracles do not happen without some Someone exercising faith in God. Anytime a miracle happens, someone acted in faith. Every time. There must be an active faith either from the direction of the receiver or from the direction of someone standing between God and the receiver of the miracle. As we will see in this broadcast. The story is taken from 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8. I read. This is about a rich woman who married a very rich man. They had everything material riches can offer except for a child. It was painful and shameful in those days to be married without a child. Not like today where some marry and say they don't want children. So with all her worth, she was dying softly in the inside anytime she sees other women with their children. Now it happened one day that Elisha passed over to Shunem where there was a notable or great woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food and she said to her husband look now i know that this is a holy man of god who passes by us regularly please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lab stand so it will be whenever he comes to us he can turn in there so she was a clever woman i told you no wonder she married a rich man she has an eye for good things she saw the man of god God and she could smell an anointing. So she said to her husband, Honey, this man is a man of God. 
This is a man who represents God, and she was not wrong. She was spot on. The husband knows that his wife is not one of those ignorant wives who follow anything wearing big suits or colorful garment calling themselves men of God. So he did what his wife has said, and it happened one day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shulamite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. He stood before him in the doorway. Glory be to God. Women, take notice of this. Next time any man of God, you visit a, a home of any so-called prophetic man of God and want you to visit him in his bedroom, tell the man of God that it is written in the Bible, the Shulamite woman stood in the doorway, so I will not enter into your chambers. Then he said to Gehazi, call this Shulamite woman. When he had called, Call her, she stood before him in the doorway and he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my people. So he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. Notice, the prophecy was specific. About this time next year, you shall embrace not a girl, not a child, but a son. Specific prophecy. Somebody say, about this time next year. When real men of God are talking, they don't beat about the bush. I don't know what is confronting you or what you have been crying for. But I want to tell you today, mark today's date, about this time next year, something good must happen to you in the name of Jesus. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your servant. Don't lie to me, man of God. You have no clue what kind of things I have secretly suffered from the hands of so-called men of God. Don't lie to me, man of God, because hope defense makes the heart sick. Don't lie to me just because I did this gesture for you. Not just because I gave you a place to sleep. Just just because I gave you a home, just because I gave you a bed, just because I gave you that car, don't lie to me. Don't give me false prophecy. Don't raise my hope. You have no clue how many so-called men of God lied to me. Don't lie to me because I gave you that suit or that tie or that big offering. Don't lie to me. There are so many people holding so-called prophetic meetings, lying to vulnerable people under the theme prophecy, yet they are lying down. Devils. They cannot even distinguish between the word of knowledge and prophecy. Don't lie to me, man of God. Just let sleeping dog lie. Some of these self-made men of God are temple of the devil who are using familiar spirits. They have sown their souls in exchange of power to make money through church. And you will know them by their inconsistency prophecies and word of knowledge. But the woman conceived glory. It's God. The woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her, there is an appointed time for you. Don't budge. Don't give up. Hold on a little bit, for there is appointed time. Hallelujah. The man of God told her she's going to have a baby boy in a year's time. He did not speculate. He did not leave her in a limbo like some of the deadly ones we have heard today. Lying devil. Last week I told you how a woman left her husband and has to go back to Africa to pick her old boy boyfriend because a, a notable prophet prophet in this country told her that the man she's living with is not her husband but her old boyfriend was and she did that prophet forgot that bible says that that shall not break marriage and whatsoever god has put together don't put a sender if that prophet is a prophet of god will know that you don't break marriages she had a miraculous child an extraordinary birth at a pointed time and the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. 
his only child none came after him a wealthy man we were not told how old they were before they had this child so you could see the joy in the home it was only one child a very special one a son who will inherit him someday by the way i don't know what name they gave the child so i will call him miracle so i could see a papa miracle holding his child and taking him to the working places for his customers to see him a proud papa and mama miracle entering a grocery shop with him to treat him with whatever he asked for i could envision them in white attire probably with the name of their child written at the front and back of their t-shirt then one day the inevitably <laughs> happened when the boy was with his father at work he complained about headache so he said one of the workers take him to his mother when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then died can you imagine the child died their miracle died their hope died died their riches and wealth could not save him the long-awaited miracle is lifeless in the hands of mama miracle her happiness have been aborted and terminated they have waited so long to have him and now he said dead meat in the laps of the mother can you imagine can you put yourself in the shoes of this family can you put yourself in the life of this family their only child their miraculous child is dead in the laps of the mother what a scene in the home of mama miracle what happened when the miracle dies beloved what happens when the miracle dies i told you don't bury your dead miracle i tell you my beloved many have gone through agonies pains trials of all kinds and i ha- have survived so you you will survive if you have faith as she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of god shut the door upon him and went out then she called to her husband and said please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that i may run to the man of god and come back so he said why are you going to him today it is neither the new moon nor the sabbath and she said it is where glory be to god (laughs) say it is where i want to hear you say it is where i thought they had a funeral i thought their miracle is dead but this woman said it is where it takes faith to talk like this when all that you are surrounded with is darkness shattered dreams broken heart devastation the bad the worst the ugly and things that make you go google or yahoo and lose your abscess but in all this the woman of faith said it is where glory it is where today we sing when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea below roll whatever my and Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is where, it is where with my soul. Beautiful, isn't it? Beloved, those lyrics I just read bubble from the soul of a man of faith, Horatio Spafford, who lost his only son to scarlet fever at just four years in 1870. Then a year later, fire destroyed almost all his real estate business in Chicago on October 8, 1971. As if it is not enough, on November 22, 1873, his four daughters, Anna, also called Annie, Margaret, Elizabeth, who is also called Bissy, and Tanita, drawn in a shipwreck on the Pacific Ocean on their way to England for a miracle crusade with D.L. Moody. Only their mother survived to break the news to their father. But Spartford sailed to England and at the same location of his daughter's death, Horatio looked at the waves of the water and composed this wonderful song we sing every now and then. Thank God they went ahead and had another beautiful daughter and they call her Bertha. Then this woman saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward do not slacken the pace for me unless i tell you and so she departed and went to the man of god at mount camel so it was when the man of god saw her afar off that he said to his servant gehaza look the shulamite woman please run now to meet her and say to her is it well with you is it well with your husband is it
it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. <laughs> it is well, said the woman who has every reason to be bitter, but she was not. I wonder what you would have said if it was you. You would have bombarded the man of God. Did I ask you for a child? Why did you raise our hope? Did we make a mistake by opening our door for you and give you a place to rest in our home? Why have you brought pain to us at this time of our years. It takes faith to talk this kind of talk. She knows the child is dead, but she said, it is well. Say after me, it is well. Do you have any death situation? Let me ask you. Oh, I love that attitude of the gun tribe from Accra, Ghana. When you ask them, how are you doing? They will say, we are holding on. We are not letting go. Now, when when this woman came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, Did I ask you a son, my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive? me then he said to Gehazi get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way if you meet anyone do not greet him and if anyone greets you do not answer we mean business but lay my staff on the face of the child and the mother of the child said as long as the Lord lives and as your soul lives I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. This woman cannot be shaken. I love her determination. As I see by Auntie Jai, she don't know what is no. She won't take no for an answer. If you have given me a miracle, my miracle must live. What do you think she want the man of God to do? She wanted the man of God to do something for her than to bury her child. Even up to today, when the child died in those places in Palestine, they must bury the child with Within 24 hours, the journey to the man of God and back, she refused to bury her dead miracle. Have you buried your dead miracle? She does not care how the man of God will restore her child back to life. This is none of her business. If you give me a miracle, that miracle must live. That's a policy. Now the unknowns are on the man of God to deliver and to perform. A pastor was sent to Israel to pastor a church over there. And when this pastor went into this church, there was an old woman in the church. He said, Pastor, I thank you for coming. I thank God for bringing you. But here we don't preach story. If you don't have God with you, you will be in trouble. I thank you for coming. But I hope you brought God with you. God with you. Man of God, it is easy to preach today it is easy to preach and to be a pastor it is easy to put a sermon together but to deliver the word of god with demonstration and the power of the holy ghost it takes more than just ordinary pray for me pray for me or a little bit shout over there paul after he was called after a tremendous calling by god he has to hide himself for over 10 years in arabian desert for the power of god to flow in his life it may be easy to give a miracle child but what about restoring back the child to life she refused to bury her child simple i don't know what death situation is facing you but don't bury it don't bury it my beloved don't bury it there is somebody who can bring life into that situation by the power of god so now Gehazi. As I went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor any sound heard. Therefore, he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. I told you, it's not everybody that can bring a child back to life. Gehazi could not do. The old tricks could not do. Now they have to rely on Jehovah God to give them new way of bringing this child back to life.